Jack, could you give me a hand? Got it. What do you think? It's cool. You're just saying that. No, it is. How's your second place ribbon coming? It's, it's okay. Here. It's too bad they're not giving out ribbons for making ribbons. How are the awards coming? Oh my gosh. Amy, that's beautiful. Thank you. Jack. That's lovely. That is really, really special. Thank you. Yes, and uh, oh, is something wrong? Oh, I, th I thought I packed my recipe tin. Uh, oh, will you hand it to me? Thank you, a true gentleman, Amy. Take note. All right, we better get going. Jack, will you get the um, Santa Sparks boxes for the show? Sure. Okay. Um, get your coat on, sweetie. You're running low. Uh, well, that's because they're so special. I only make them at Christmas time. There you go, sweetie. You look like a princess. And you a prince, Jack. Shall we? Yes. Okie doke. My gingerbread men are gonna walk all over the competition this year. Not if the judges get a taste of my holly jollies. Oh, they're beautiful. Hi. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Good luck, okay? Thank they're you amazing. So much. Amazing. <laughs> I'm speechless. We'll put them right here. You know, if I pull the fire alarm, we can have all these cookies to ourselves. I'd sell up for some of my Aunt Santa Sparks. I think you dropped something. What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm not the clutch that dropped all the cookies. Knock it off, Dylan. That's awesome. Jack Evans needs a girl to protect him. Come on, Amy, protect him. Leave her out of this. Say what you want to say, Evans, but everyone knows what you really are. Ah, coward. Hey, knock it off. Jack. You okay? I'm fine. Yeah, don't let that bully bother you. I said I'm fine. All right, come on. Give me a hand. Ah, let me help you. Who wants a cookie? Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. For all you latecomers out there, and you know who you are, my name is Earl Pratt, voice of Chestnut Radio, and the host and the judge of the 20th annual Christmas Cookie Contest! Thank you very much. Now, before we can find out this year's top cookie, I'd like to mention a few of the wonderful people who've made this all possible. First and foremost, a special thank you to Mr. Frank O'Brien, who lends us his diner every year to accommodate all of you lovely people. Frank, take a bow. Yay! My pleasure, my pleasure. Every year, Frank whips up a batch of his melted snowmen. Now, how many times have you won, Frank? Never. And yet, every year, you keep coming back. Of course, this could be the year. This is it. Now, see, folks, that is the spirit. Let's hear it. Thank you, Frank. Now, I would like to acknowledge the woman who, for the past 20 years, has made this an annual event not to be missed. I want you to put your hands together and give it up for the sweetest woman you'll ever meet, pun intended, Linda Sullivan. Come on up, Linda, come on up. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Remember, the winner of tonight's contest receives a featured spot on my bakery's menu for a full year, with the sales proceeds benefiting Chestnut's elementary after school programs. Yes, also, a special spot alongside previous champions in my famous recipe tin. 
pretty big deal, right? And last but not least, a year full of bragging rights. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Now for the prizes. First, our runner-up, if you will. Edna's Gingerbread Man! Woo! Here you are, Edna. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Nice one. Now, the moment you have all been waiting for. May I have the grand prize ribbon, please? Oh, thank you. Oh, my, my. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? Oh, yeah. Don't tell me you made this all yourself. <laughs> yes. Well, it ought to be. She's been making these since she was four years old. And just in case you didn't know, little Miss Amy there just happens to be Linda's niece. <laughs> all righty now, fasten your seat belts. The winner of the 20th annual Christmas Cookie contest is Mary Bantley and her Holly Jollies. There you are. Yes. <laughs> Woo. That's wonderful. That's just hey, wonderful. Amy, I have this price for you. Everyone, get a picture of that. You'll get them next year, Frank. Next year will be the one. My aunt will kill us if she found out. Then we better eat the evidence. Well? Perfect. Merry Christmas, Amy. Merry Christmas, Jack. those data sheets ASAP. Oh, and tell Becca to have the layout to me by noon. Amy. Bradley. Don needs to see you. Oh. Did he say why? He didn't say. You know how Mr. Dupree gets. When he wants something, he wants it. Yeah, I know. Pronto. Yeah, pronto. Hello? Amy. Jeanette, hi. This is a surprise. I'm about to step into a meeting. Can I call you back? Look, I just need a minute. I need a minute. What am I supposed to tell Don? You're supposed to tell Don I need a minute. OK, I don't think he's going to be very happy about that. It's your job. All right. What's going on? It's about your end. Time for a caffeine break. Excellent. Thanks, Pop. You know, I'm retired from the military now, so you might want to think about retiring that old coffee mug. Oh, never. Oh. The thing looks like it's had a few tours of its own. Your service to our country is my proudest thing in life. Uh, thanks, Pop. And that being said, I can't wait to see what you've got planned for a second act. Pop. Don't start. We're not trying to push you, son. Really? It's just that everybody in her book club, they all have grandkids. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you seriously trying to guilt me with mom's book club right now? Dad, I just retired two months ago. I'm going to figure it out. And then? Well, I know what's happening here. Mom sent you out here armed with caffeine to do a little reconnaissance work on my love life. Am I right? You're not going to send me back in there empty handed, are you? I don't know. Kind of sounds like a personal problem to me, Pop. All right, Jack. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're enjoying this. Yeah, it ain't to be you. Get back to work, pal. Good luck. Luke. Hey, Jack. Hey, last time uh, we spoke, you were headed to Panama. How was it? I got to meet some of Jeanette's relatives. It was nice. Listen, 
I wish I was calling to catch up, but I got some bad news. So, accounting should get all the invoices for Keller department stores submitted and paid pronto. Mr. Dupree? I'm sorry, this isn't a good time. It's okay, Bradley. Let her in. You may come in. You can go. Okay. Stone, please, have a seat. Thank you. <clears throat> Am I in trouble? You think I just call people into my office when they're in trouble? Is that the reputation I have out on the floor? Don't answer that. I asked you to come in because I had a very interesting phone call this morning from Logan Keller. Logan Keller, the CEO of... Uh... Keller Department Stores. Thanks to the campaign that you spearheaded, profits for the holiday season are up 25% from last year. Wow. And 30% from the year before that. Well, if you're going to thank anyone, it would be Gordon Royce because he's the star of the campaign. Yeah, but whose idea was it to put Gordon Royce in the ads in the first place. Mine, sir. Stone, I made a decision. It's time to promote you to junior partner. Junior partner? More responsibility, more money, window office, and an assistant. How's that sound? Unless you're not interested. No, of course I'm interested. No, I'm sorry. It's, uh, I just found out that my aunt passed away. I am sorry to hear that. That's okay. Were you close? Yeah, I was, actually. She, she raised me uh, after my parents died. Well then, what are you doing here? What do you mean? You should be making travel plans. I can't, I'm too busy. I... Stone, believe me when I tell you, nothing is more important than family. You were married three times. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And what was the name of that town that you grew up in? Walnut? Chestnut. Must have been quaint. It is, actually. Believe it or not, I grew up in a small town myself. Population 500. Well, Chestnut's not that much bigger than that. For heaven's sakes, go pay respects to your aunt. Are you sure? No. Just be back in time for the Christmas Eve party. That's when we'll be making announcements of our new junior partnerships. I will. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was sweet. It was a beautiful service, don't you think? Yeah. She was so wonderful. The whole town loved her. Looks like they even had a moment of silence at the high school. I don't understand why she didn't tell me she was sick. Because she didn't want you to worry. I know, but I could have at least been there for her. I didn't even get to say goodbye. Yeah. She was so proud of you. <laughs> Living across the country, New York City, big job. The last thing she would want was to pull you away. Then why didn't you tell me? Because nobody really knew how serious it was. Not even her staff. She closed the bakery. Yeah, well, that was well she recovered. She seemed fine. After they put her on this hard medication. We were supposed to reopen after Christmas, but come on. You know how Linda was. I was so upbeat. Always looking out for everyone else. Yeah. But still, I she shouldn't have died alone. Thank you, officer. 
Sure, no problem. You want me to go in with you? No, it's all right. I need to do this by myself, but thank you. Listen, maybe you should just tell Dylan to do this another day. I'll be fine. I'll be at O'Brien's if you need me, okay? All right. Thank you for bringing sure. me here. All right. Bye. Thank you. Amy? Amy Stone. Earl. You know, Luke said you were coming back to town. Yeah, you know, I had to come back for my aunt's funeral. Oh, I was so sorry to hear about your aunt. She was a sweet, sweet lady. No pun intended. Thank you. She was, wasn't she? Chestnut will never be the same without her bakery, and especially without her annual Christmas cookie contest. Yeah, she sure did keep that tradition alive, didn't she? Hey, you know I host it now? I took over hosting for my dad a few years after he died. Oh, that's great. I'm so sorry, though, about your dad. It's okay. Yeah. Would you believe this would have been the 50th anniversary? It's a shame it's over. 50 years. Wow. Anyway, it's super great catching up with you, <laughs> but I gotta get back to the studio, you know? The voice of Chestnut never rests. <laughs> great seeing you. Hey, since you're in town, why don't you come on by? You can go on the air and tell some stories about your aunt. Oh, I would love that. I have to take care of this and get back to New York, you know, my work. <laughs> well, let me know if you change your mind. Thank you, I will. So great seeing you. Great seeing Amy you Amy Stone, as I live and breathe. <laughs> Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm here to Amy. see you. Amy. Dylan. <laughs> I expected your father. Ah, uh, yeah, Pop retired about a year ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Huh. No, thank you. Wow. Dylan Carruthers, the boy who stole my bike in fourth grade and shoved a kid in a locker in high school, is now a lawyer. A lot changed since you left. I bet. Yeah, I would have thought you'd be on the other side of the law. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just in time. So since we're all here, why don't we go in and get started? We? Yeah. You remember Jack. Jack? Lou Amy? Uh, what's he doing here? Nice to see you, too. Well, he's mentioned in the will. What? Loved your aunt just as much as you did. Okay, let's have a seat. Your aunt was very precise with her will. She was short and sweet. Basically, you two are equal partners. Equal? Partners? Yeah, to put it simply, she gave you both her entire estate. Her house, her car, savings account, which had about $4,000 in it, and of course, the bakery. The, the bakery? bakery? Like I said, short and sweet. I don't understand. What she really wants to know is why she has to share with me. Look, if this is what my aunt wanted, then fine. We'll sell everything, split the proceeds 50-50, and go about our lives. Happy? It's all yours. Dylan, are there uh, documents or something that we need to sign for this? Well, I, uh... In a rush? Actually... Heaven forbid you actually have to spend time in your hometown. You know, with us lowly people. <laughs> Actually, I have a life in New York with a job and a promotion to junior partner. Ooh, junior partner. Yeah, I have to be back for a meeting on the 24th. Christmas Eve, who do you work for, Ebenezer Scrooge? <laughs> well, if you must know, I happen to work for the biggest agency in New York City. I know, I saw the Keller Department Store campaign. Very impressive. Oh, really, like you would see that. Question for you, are those Gordon Royce's real teeth? I mean, just break it down to me because no human really has teeth that look like that. <laughs> you cyber stalked me. You didn't cyber anything. Yeah, you did. I mean, is that even really a word? Oh, sorry. What would you call it then? Curiosity. Whatever. You stalked me. Anyway. If God didn't want people to know about each other, he wouldn't have invented Google. Okay. Are you two quite finished? Sorry. Okay. It's just one more thing. Mm-hmm. Linda has a letter for you. Dear Amy and Jack. I hope you know how proud I am of the adults the two of you have become. I don't want my passing to be a sad occasion. That's why I'm asking the two of you to reopen the bakery for the holidays and to present the 50th annual Christmas cookie contest. After that, you and Jack are free to do whatever you want with the bakery and my house. 
I just want one last hurrah before the bakery closes for good. Will you please do that for me? Oh, my love, Linda. Reopened the bakery? I, I, I mean, we haven't worked there since we were teenagers, and she has a whole staff, doesn't she? Well, you know, uh, to be honest, lately, it's been kind of lean. Jeanette has worked for her for years. Why couldn't she do it? You're not obligated to do any of these things. It's just last wish of a dying woman. Great. I mean, this is seriously one heck of a guilt trip. A guilt trip? Yeah, a guilt trip. That's what you took away from that? A guilt trip? I can't even look at her right now. You know what, Jack? I'll make it easy for you. Goodbye. Amy. What? Does this place really mean that little to you? Did I say that? That bakery has been in your family for years. We practically grew up there. You could have at least given your aunt a moment's respect before you throw the whole idea out the window. Christmas is a week away. So what? So, it, you think that we can reopen a bakery and hold a cookie contest in a Why week? Why not? Why not? It's impossible, Jack. The Amy Stone I knew didn't even know the meaning of that word. You know what? I have responsibilities that I have to get back to in New York. I'm sorry. I just thought you might want to do something nice for the woman that raised you. But you have a life to get back to, junior partner. Yeah, I do. Nice to see you again. Uh-huh, you too. Great. You are going to do so well in that test tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> Even if we did it, it would have taken a Christmas miracle to turn that place around so quickly. Getting the word out about the contest at this point? No, I don't see how we could have done it. Amy. Send her way to the airport. Jack, Amy. She's here. Hey. Hey, guys. Hi. So, thought you'd be eating peanuts at 39,000 feet by now. I'm sorry about earlier. You're right. My aunt deserves better than this, and if the contest is that important to her, then we're going to make it happen. What about your big promotion? Well, if I'm good enough to make Junior partner, then he's going to have to cut me some slack. Sounds like you're rehearsing. Haven't told him yet, have you? No, not yet. Well, just treat him like you treat me, and you'll be just fine. Well, guys, it's the 16th. 
You only got nine days till Christmas. That's all we need. And we got good friends to help. We'll get the bakery up and running. We'll have the cookie contest on Christmas Eve. Jeanette, you're rehired. The 10% raise. Luke, you're done teaching until school starts again in January? Yeah. Could you use your economic skills and please help us with our finances? Whatever it takes. I'll take the marketing campaign since that's my area of expertise. So, what do I do? You'll just figure it out. Okay, well, if you guys are done eating, let's go. What just happened? I don't know, but don't knock it. I mean, this bakery is back in business. Frank, check, please. Anything? I got her voicemail. Give it to me. I, I can handle the voice. Bradley. Stone is done. Listen, when we announce your junior partnership, I'd like you to make an acceptance speech. 90 seconds, no reading off index cards, memorize it. And by the way, when exactly are you coming back? I'll let Bradley pick you up at the airport. Call me. I, I don't have a car. You don't have a car? This is New York City. Who doesn't have a car? You, you don't have a car. I don't need a car. I have a driver. Well, send the driver. Bradley, this is Christmas. The poor woman had to go home for her aunt's funeral. I'm trying to do something nice for a change. I'm sorry. How many people did I fire today? None. Exactly. Yesterday? None. Exactly. And the day before that? None. Uh, well, no, actually, actually, you did fire Mr. Lundberg from, from legal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay, well. But I'm trying to make a change. Yeah, of course. To be nice. Be nice. So be nice. Mm hmm And? I'll, I'll make arrangements for a car service ASAP. That's the spirit. And Bradley? Yeah. Let's send Mr. Lindberg. L Lundberg. Lundberg. Mm -hmm. uh, fruitcake. Let him know there's no hard feelings. Okay. Good. Well, what do you think? Really hasn't changed that much, has it? Linda was always big on tradition. Yep. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Run things the way she used to. Honey, where did Linda keep all her financials, AP invoices? I need to get a handle on more. Oh, yeah. Hold well, on a second. Let's see. Yep, right here. Oh. Here we go, hon. You gotta be kidding me, really? Maybe she had an abacus to go with it? Mind if I talk to you for a second? Sure. A couple of hours ago, you were taking a cab to the airport, so who made you leader? No one. Why? You want the job? No, no. You've always been type A, so by all means, you take it. Thank you. You're welcome. And just to clarify, that was a compliment, right? Maybe. So what does that make you? Silent partner? Good. So shush. She did not just shush me. She just shushed me. Yep, you were shushed. You just shushed me. Yes, I did. Let's go check out the kitchen and see what we need to do in there, guys. Yeah, I'll check the pantry for Linda's recipe tin. You guys weren't kidding. This place really hasn't been updated. You know, for a silent partner, you talk a lot. What? So when do we open? I think we can get this up and running in a day or two. Not here. Guys, we got a problem. Just one? I can't find Linda's recipe tin. Oh, come on. She still didn't keep her recipes in it. Seriously? Well, she was old fashioned. Well, would it have been too much for her to get a computer? Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> well, come on. It's got to be around her somewhere, right? Well, you know what? I'll just keep checking. And um, in the meantime, I mean, I have some cookbooks at home. No, 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 no. We can't open Linda's bakery without Linda's cookies. That tin was her prized possession. It had every secret recipe in it. Well, I don't see it around here anywhere. All right, why don't you guys keep looking? I'll call Dylan. Okay. Okay. Mr. Carruthers, Amy Stone for you, line one. <sighs> Thank you. Amy, <laughs> how's it going down there so far? Could be better. I can't find Linda's recipe tin. Do you have any idea where it's at? Uh, what does it look like? You know exactly what it looks like. 
Remember when we were kids and you knocked it over and it took Aunt Linda three days to put every card back? Oh, that. Yes, that. I can't believe after all these years you still think I did that on purpose. Yes, because I saw you do it. No, see, that's where you're mistaken. It was an accident. We were kids, we were playing around, and, I, and no, I haven't seen it. Okay, thanks. We'll keep looking. All right, you guys get those cookies done. Bye now. Bye. I don't know why, but talking to him kind of makes my skin crawl. It's been a long time. People change. Doubt it. Linda must have taken the tin home for safekeeping. Well, lucky for us, I have a key to her house. So if it's there, I will find it. Right. Nice. It's starting to look like the bakery again. It's coming along, huh? Yes. Are you sure you're going to be able to get all the baking done tomorrow? Well, as long as we find Linda's recipes, I'll stay as long as I have to. Mm. I think that Thank we should you. bring cookbooks just as backup. Plan B? Plan B. You got it. OK, well, good night, guys. Manana. Manana. Good night, Jack. See you tomorrow. Good night, Amy. Day or two, huh? Christmas is coming. It's that time of year when family comes calling from far and near. I told you to go pay respects to your aunt, Stone. Now revive the family business. I hope you're not this easily swayed with our clients. No, of course not. It's, it's just it's a little bit more complicated than I expected. The only thing that's going to get more complicated is your promotion. You must be there for the announcement on Christmas Eve. I understand. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm not asking for any extra favors after everything that you've done for me. Well, you're right about one thing. And I have been way too generous lately. I'll give you two more days. But that's it. Mr. Dupree, I don't think I can. What is that? Don't try to change the subject. I heard something. What? There it is again. Stone, what's going on? I don't see anything. I think it's in the bathroom. Stone, get out of there. <gasps> Stone, are you all right? Mr. Dupree, I have to call you back. Sorry. Stone! Jack, what are you doing here? What do you mean I'm taking a shower? Why? Why here? Wait, Dylan didn't tell you? Tell me what? Stone, you okay? Don, yes, I'm fine. It was a slight misunderstanding, but everything's okay. And the man in the house? Oh, so not a threat. A pain, but not a threat. I'm glad you're okay. I was afraid I was gonna lose my new junior partner. No, everything's fine, honest. You call me in the morning. We need to get you back here ASAP. You got it. I can't believe he gave you a key without talking to me first. Co-owners, where did you think I was gonna stay? Oh, I don't know, maybe your parents' house, a hotel, anywhere but here. For your information, my parents moved out a long time ago. Well, we both can't stay here. Trust me, I will be a perfect gentleman. I am sorry, but you are gonna have to stay somewhere else. I'm sorry, I have just as much right to be here as you do. And besides, I've unpacked. Well, that shouldn't be a problem then. Don't they teach you to pack light in the military? That's a good one. Look, I get it. It's a lot to process. This, you, me, everything. But you stay in your old room, I will stay in the guest room, and we will stay out of each other's way. Yeah, fine. 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 Fine, fine, fine. Aunt Linda, what were you thinking?
This is Earl Pratt Jr. What's cracking, Chestnut? I've got some breaking blast from the past news for you. Straight from the streets, you'll never believe who I ran into on a walk. None other than the class of 91 homecoming queen, head cheerleader, and all around it girl, Amy Stone. Be still my heart. Remember, you heard it here first on K-Nut 100.5, The Nut. Rise and shine. Get up. Uh -huh. oh. What? It's 6 a.m. Exactly. We need to find my aunt's recipe tin. Wake up. Come on. Coffee? Can you put on some coffee, please? Maybe. <sighs> please. Not bad. You're welcome. Thanks. This tin is not in here. You know what? I think we're gonna have to search the garage and the living room next. You know what? I don't know what the big deal is. All we need is some cookies. <laughs> oh, come on. Have you been gone that long? We're not just celebrating any cookies. We need Aunt Linda's cookies. They're a brand. Oh, got it. I mean, don't you remember the peppermint ones that would melt in your mouth? Oh, those were so good. See, that's what I'm talking about. What were they called again? Oh, um... Santa... Skippy, Santa... No. Snazzy... Sparks. Yes! Santa, Santa Sparks. Sparks. I haven't thought of those in so long. Wow. Those were amazing. Yeah, they were amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Jack? Hmm? Go search the garage. Okay. Now. I'll go search the living room. Just gonna have to do the best that we can. No, we're gonna find it. I really think we will. Hey, hey though. Hey. Hi. Hi. Did you find it? I didn't. Find what? Nope. Oh, the recipe. But we're gonna have to get cooking. You guys yeah. wanna go in? Yeah, let's yeah. go in. You're not cooking anything. All right, well, I'll meet you in there. Better cook than you. Oh, come on. I, I gotta say, I was a little surprised to get your call. I thought you were in a hurry to leave town. Well, I wanted you to be the first to know that we're gonna reopen the bakery for the holidays. Really? Yeah, and we're gonna move forward with the 50th anniversary of the Christmas cookie contest. You are! Christmas Eve. We would be so honored if you would keep the tradition of being our host and judge. I thought you'd never ask. Jeanette and Luke already told you, didn't they? Yeah, but it was fun hearing you say it again. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the same without you. I wouldn't let you do it without me. <laughs> well, perfect, it's settled. I do have one favor, though. You want to come on the air and promote the grand reopening? Yeah, I do. It would be such an amazing way to get the word out. Absolutely. How's the day after tomorrow? Perfect. You know, I can do a whole little countdown, like the 12 days of Christmas, only sweeter and just a little shorter. I love it. Guess I better start baking. Right, you don't need old Earl Pratt, you know, talking your ear off the whole time. What is that nutmeg you're putting in there? Oh, no, it's good. <laughs> All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, it'll All be right. just like Christmas with the smell it of cookies will. in the air, like old times. Thank you. Yeah, we kids can't tasting wait. the cookies, all the frosting, and the cherries, and... Hey, Jeff! Jeffrey! 
Uh, that guy. Has more wind than a hurricane. Did he agree to everything? Of course he did. I'm going on a show in a couple days. You? Yes. Why you? Marketing's my thing. I know what to say. Uh-uh. If you go, this guy goes. 50-50. Remember? Fine. Just don't do any talking during the interview, okay? What are we doing in the meantime? Can you start baking? Plan B? We don't actually have a plan B. Can you whip up a batch of cookies in an hour? You got it. What's the rush? The rush is nothing spreads the word like the smell of fresh baked cookies wafting through the town. Edible advertising. Genius. Exactly. Hey, Luke, how are the finances? Well, applying the same criteria I'd give to my students, I'd say we're looking at about a D plus. That is passing, right? I mean, theoretically, D plus is passing. Yeah, for you, Jack, that's passing. Oh, haha. <laughs> If you're asking me if we can get this place up and running, sure. Great. I say we start decorating for Christmas. Ooh, let's do it. Get let's the decorations. Perfect. Mm -hmm. What did I tell you? In 12 minutes should be just perfect. Is that it? only going to be open during the holidays. It's two weeks. Coca Leaders is now open again. Please take a cookie, sir. And don't forget the 50th anniversary of the cookie contest. Christmas Eve. Yeah, should be fun. Make those same things that you used to make when I was younger. Take a cookie. There you go. You sure? Hey, Merry Christmas. What do you think? Coca Leaders is back in business. Christmas Eve cookie contest. So what do we have fresh today? Everything is fresh. Today we have Sugar shakes, Christmas crusties, gingerbread men, snowman spores. We have chocolate, we have peanut butter, we have jelly presses, sprinkle kringles, snickerdoodles. 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 Oh, great yeah. choice. Excellent choice. That'll be $9.99, sir. All right, look, I'm doing everything I can to make sure the bakery's not too successful. That's all I'm going to say. You're just going to have to trust me on this, all right? Here's your cookies, and please come back again. We'll be here. Excellent. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, ma'am. How are you? Today we have fresh sugar shakes, Christmas crusties. Here we go. Take care. Enjoy. Thank you. These are selling so fast. I know. I love it. Oh, hi. How are you? Jack. What kind are you making right now? These are those peanut butter. OK, turn it. I just did too. We got nothing. Here, let me give it a shot. <laughs> What do you know about this stuff? Hey, when I was in Germany, I used to hang out with the mortar pool guys, and I paid attention. Come on. Yeah, like the armored Humvee has so much in common with the 66 pickup. Come on, son. Step aside and show you how it's done. Mm -hmm. I'll see it. All right. Well, first of all, it looks like these distributor cables are all out of order. You see right. that? No. Show me. What? Right here. All right. I'll bet you that's it. OK. All right. So, whatever happened to that Becky girl that you met in the pro shop? She's probably still taking tea times in the pro shop. Couldn't see yourself hanging out at the country club? No, not really my scene. You want to give it a shot now? I got a six pack, says it doesn't work. Well, you're on, and I'm thirsty. Get <laughs> it. Nada. Nothing. Nothing. Did you hear from Lee? Oh, Lee started officer training school last year. I guess what I mean, Jack, is did you hear from Lee? Well, I checked her online status once, saw that she was in a relationship. I think it's with somebody from the program, and she seemed very happy. Are you? What's up? You're my therapist all of a sudden? <laughs> Listen, man, this is all these girls, and they're all, they're all terrific girls. What, what, what about the, the one, the waitress you met at the steakhouse? 
the one you showed me the picture of, she was so smoking hot. Oh, man. Those were the best steaks. I was talking about the girl, Jack. The girl. Well, Luke, she wasn't the one. I mean, not for all the steaks in Jacksonville was she the one. What are you waiting for, man? You're not getting any younger, and you're certainly not getting any better looking. Yeah, and I'm also not going to settle. So when I fall in love, when I find the one, I, you'll see this guy will not hesitate to pull the trigger. And in the meantime, how about we fix this truck? Give it another shot. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah! Take it for a spin. Come on. It's time for my favorite segment, Local Eats. And I've got big news keeping our Christmas cookie town tradition alive are the new co-owners of Cocolita Cakes, Amy Stone and Jack Evans. Thank you, Earl. We're very happy to be here. Now, for those of you that don't know, Amy and Jack used to help run this contest when they were kids. Yes, we did. What's it like being back, doing it again after all these years? Oh, it's so great. We're so excited about this contest. And... <laughs> no, I mean you and Jack. Everybody with a memory that goes back that far knows that you two lovebirds were the hottest ticket in town back in the day. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Because <laughs> we're here to talk about the contest. So no sparks then? That was a long time ago. All righty then, what can folks expect from this contest? We're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Christmas cookie contest. We're asking everyone to bring a treat down and you can sample it, maybe win. And in the end, you know, you can have a cookie or two or, you know, share some holiday cheer. Speaking of cheer, are you two going to be toasting anything in particular this holiday? Just the bakery. Jack, do you have a girlfriend right now? I don't. Don't answer that. So you're single. And, and Amy, are you single? I'm going to be baking. We are talking about these wonderful cookies and keeping Aunt Linda's tradition alive. Okay, let's take a caller. Caller, you're on the air with Jack and Amy from Cocolitas. I'm so glad I got through. Amy and Jack, I was a freshman when you guys were seniors. Every girl wanted to be just like you guys. What happened? We're just here to talk about the bakery. Contest. Remember, it's the cookie contest that we're talking about. Sorry, the contest. Yeah, the contest. <laughs> Okay, caller, thanks for the call. And I recommend everybody here in Chestnut come on down to this contest and see what Amy and Jack are up to for themselves. Great. We look forward to it. Hey, try to see the bitch. Hey, not trying, my friend, doing. I think I finally figured out the difference between your very mediocre sugar cookies and Linda's Santa Sparks. Yeah, this is coming from a guy who struggles to reheat a slice of pizza. Oh, huh. You know, I watched her bake these my entire childhood. I'll bet you I nailed it. Look who it is. I hate to admit it, but it looks like all those marketing skills that you picked up in the big city are finally paying off. And why would you hate to admit that? That came out wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> I'm gonna get some fresh air. Do you wanna help me pass out some flyers for the contest? Sure, but before we go, the guys bake some cookies. No, no, no. Jack bake some cookies. I bake some cookies. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Shall I try one then? Closest thing to the Santa Sparks. Am I right? N no. What? Oh, no, I know you're trying to kill me. Oh, come on. Go ahead. But they can't be that bad. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> They're bad. I know. I don't get it. I use just the normal cookie ingredients. I use butter, flour, and sugar. Yeah, well, I hate to break it to you, Jack, but this isn't sugar. It's salt. Oops. Whoops. Okay, well, while we're gone, don't let him bake anything. And you might want to write salt in big letters on that container. With permanent ink. I understand, Jack. They both look alike. Better luck next time. Don't forget to enter the Christmas cookie contest is in four days. So how many people have entered? Not many, but uh, there's always a last rush, so I'm not worried. Well, I wish I could be as relaxed as you are. Oh. Hi. Oh, hi. 
Oh, I heard you and your boyfriend on the radio the other day. Oh, he's not my boyfriend. Nothing to be embarrassed about. With a pretty face like yours, I'm sure he'll come around in no time. Well, thank you, but it's not really like that. <laughs> mm hmm What? Maybe the universe is trying to tell you something. <laughs> oh, really? And by universe, you mean the town gossip? Well, the two of you were the envy of high school. So. Oh. Please, stop. What? What do you mean, what? From king and queen. <laughs> the whole school just swung when the two of you took the dance floor. <gasps> that was a long time ago. Time moves on, and so have we. Please, he still looks at you like that. Oh my god, stop. Come on, let's go over here. What? We have a no, for fire real? fly. I don't care. I'm telling you. Don't tell Amy, but that's the one. The secret is safe with me. Speaking of Amy, what's going on with you guys? What do you mean? Come on. You're together as kids, you're on again, off again, you guys are both here now. You know the story, Luke. She left me. That was 20 years ago. Well, we had plans 20 years ago. You could have gone with her. It doesn't even matter. The only thing that matters is doing what Linda wanted, which is reopening this bakery, holding the celebration, and, and, and that's it. After that, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. You're sure about that? Well, evidently, you're not sure about it, so why don't you just come out and say it? Maybe you don't see it, but the rest of us see it. Jeanette, I, everybody. There's still chemistry between you guys. I just think you're a little quick to write it off, that's all. So what am I supposed to do? I don't know. Ask her to dinner. After everything that's happened? I'm pretty sure she still has to eat. But hey, it's none of my business, man. You'll figure it out. I nailed it. I think it's time we call it a night. Thanks. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Come on, my man. Yep. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. Well, I will have you know that I am getting very close to cracking the code to Linda's Santa Sparks. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Huh. No, I mean, <laughs> Sorry, Luke is getting close, <laughs> not me, because... Right, because you don't bake? Right, I'm not yeah. allowed. I, I would never bake. No, I didn't think so. Has anyone ever told you you're a terrible liar? Yeah, I've heard that once before. I'm sure you have. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've wasted enough cookie dough for one day. Sue. Amy. Jack. Faith. Faith, come on. I want you to put that on. I want you to follow me. Okay. Flour. Two cups. Sugar. Half a cup. Uh, here's, uh, here's the half a cup. Salt. Two cups, right? <laughs> uh, let's do a teaspoon this time. Good idea. You the boss. I know. Teaspoon. And I'll need a rolling pin. Rolling pin. Here we go. Watch this. Wow. You look like a professional baker. It's all coming back to me now. Some of my best memories are right here in this room. You know, the first time I ever saw you was right at this table. You were helping Linda bake and you were stealing chocolate chips out of the bag. <laughs> I was. <laughs> uh, I think I need more flour. Well, let's get you some flour. You know what, Amy? I think it's time for a peace offering between us. And as a token of peace, I would like you to please accept this bouquet. 
Don't you dare. No, what are you doing? Flower. I cannot believe you did that. <laughs> It's not my fault. The newscast yeah. said there's a slight chance of Well, you know what? What? The forecast way off. Oh, because, yeah. you know why? Why? You want to know why? Why? We got hit with a blizzard! Oh! <laughs> <sighs> you think there's ever any chance of this storm letting up? It's clearing. That's good. I'm hungry. Would you like to? Maybe we should you know, go out and have, have dinner. dinner. Okay, if you do. Yes, I mean, if you, you do. do. I do. I do. Yeah. I do if you do. I do. Okay. Great. Great. Let's do that. Okay. Remove the evidence. Please. All done? Yep. It's nice to see you sitting at your old table again. Oh, I forgot we had a table. We had everything. Well, it was delicious. Back in New York, I'm always eating on the run or jumping in on my coworker's order, which is usually gluten-free food and green smoothies. Yeah. Food in the military is not exactly the best, either. I practically survived on Linda's cookie care packages. Oh, you got those too? Yeah. <laughs> Send sparks and all. When it would come every month, I was the most popular guy in the unit. She was an angel. Oh, well, we didn't order this. I know. Ho, ho, ho. Shall we? The first time I saw you, I knew A spark that I couldn't undo Not even if I wanted to And in this moment I saw my life pass before me And I knew that it was love Whatever happened to us? I knew this was coming sooner or later. Do we really have to do this tonight? I mean, we're having such a lovely evening. Well, if not now, when? You're gonna run off to New York the first chance you get. I'm not running anywhere. I mean, going home is not running. Is that where you go home? When people ask you where you're from, what do you tell them? New York? Yep, because that's where I live. It's not where you're from. Do you remember what my Aunt Linda used to say? Bloom where you're planted? Right? Yeah. Originally, you were planted right here with me. Okay, but I put roots down in New York. And I asked you to come with me. And you said no, you didn't want to leave Chestnut. You moved away too. Well, you had your reason and... I had mine. Okay. So what were your reasons? This place, no matter where I walked, the smell of the air, every face reminded me of you.
morning. Refill? No, I'm good. Could you help me with this for a second? Yeah. Can you please hold this while I cut the ribbon? Thank you. Don't forget, Dylan asked us to stop by his office on the way to the bakery. That's right. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll take a shower then. Okay. Um, <laughs> we don't need to talk about last night. Huh? All right, I didn't think so. All right. Sir? Stone call back. N no, but I guess she's having too much of a good time in hazelnut. Uh, chestnut. I'm beginning to think maybe I was just too hasty in it. Sir! What is it? Something horrible happened. It it's all over the internet. My ex-wife is getting remarried. I don't... My new wife is getting a divorce. Just... Just look. look. I can't imagine anything worth... It's Gordon Royce. Look what he's done. Oh. Uh, clear my schedule. Consider it cleared, sir. Get me stone. Pronto. Pronto, sir. This is the voice of Chestnut Earl Pratt Jr. reminding you that the countdown is on, people. We've got less than one week to go until the 50th annual Christmas cookie contest. Now, some of you have tried to get ahead and bring some cookies by the radio studio to bribe me, and I want to say I am not above being bribed with cookies. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You're offering us $400,000 for the bakery and the house as a package deal? Not a bad Christmas bonus, huh? <laughs> I'll take the liberty of having the contracts drawn up. Well, shouldn't we have the property appraised first? Ah, uh, yes. The property has been appraised by a neutral third party, and you'll see that it appraises for far less than what I'm offering you. Look. I know you two aren't gonna be sticking around here. You've got your life in New York, you've got your life in Florida. Think of this as me helping you guys out. What about the bakery? The bakery? <laughs> That's a historic landmark. I mean, you can't put a price tag on that. And I'd like to see to it that it's taken care of in a proper manner. I understand. I just don't know if this is something that my aunt would have wanted, you know? Consider it a peace offering for all the crap I put you through when we were kids. <laughs> well, I guess that puts us right back where we started with uh, liquidating the assets. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, there's some outside chance that uh, you might be thinking of staying. I can't. I have to get back to my job. You no, know? of course. You know, and you have Florida. Yeah. You have to figure that out. Doesn't seem to make sense to, you know. No. All right, well, let's do it. Okay. What do we sign? Right by the little red flags. Or orange in this case. <laughs> Thank you. That's nice and handy. Yeah. All right. Mr. Carruthers? Mr. Brewer's on line one. Okay, thanks, Jillian. I'll be right out. Oh, excuse me for one second. Oh, no problem. Take your time. It shouldn't be too long. I've been waiting on a phone call. I... And there you go. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Your worries are over. Amy. safely secured it in my name. Now, I, I got the signed documents right here in my hand. Well, I'll transfer the title over to Espresso's Arrest January 1. Espresso's Arrest? What? Yeah, I knew it. What, you don't think that he's trying to? Yes, I heard him. Well, maybe you misheard him. I did not mishear him. Oh, Jack, 
No. Yes. Snooping. Espressos are us. You caught me. There's no crime in flipping property, right? Especially when said property does belong to me. Oh, that I found this morning. I was just about to give it back to you. You're unbelievable. You know, you haven't changed a bit. Are you gonna punch me in the face? Is that what they teach you in the military? No, no. I'm gonna do something much, much worse. Merry Christmas. Oh, guys. You are so fired. Got it? Is that it? Yep. Behold, for in my hands I hold the top secret ingredients to Linda Santa's Let's <gasps> oh. see. What were we doing wrong? Oh. Peppermint extract. Peppermint extract. <laughs> I didn't think of that. I don't know. It's so simple. simple. It's deceptive, Lisa. All right, guys, let's start baking the Santa Sparks. Do we have any peppermint I'm extract? I'm sure we have it somewhere. We've got to find some. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Don. I am so sorry that I haven't gotten back to you. Oh, zip it, Stone. If you work for me, you take my calls 24-7. You got it? Got it. Sorry. We are in crisis mode here. Why? The Christmas Eve party isn't for three days. With everything that's just happened, there may not be a party. If you hadn't fallen off the radar, you'd know that the charming movie star you hired for the Keller's campaign was just seen online in a photograph that's gone viral. Naked? Worse. Arrested? Worse. You got caught cheating with a Christmas shopping bag from Luffs. Luffs? You can imagine the reaction we've had from our friends at Keller's. They've canceled the whole campaign and given us 48 hours to come up with a new one. Ads, billboards, TV spots, the works. Don, we can't turn a campaign around that quickly. I mean, it's just impossible. Well, it's got to be done, or we lose our biggest client. I understand, but... There's no buts about it, Stone. You get on that next plane back to New York, or you're out of a job. Have I made myself clear? Yes, sir. I'll be on the next plane to New York. Good. See you then. Bye. <sighs> what? That was awesome. Get out of here. Okay. So that's it, huh? One phone call and you're leaving? You're eavesdropping? Because some things really haven't changed, have they? I don't have a choice. No, no, you always have a choice. But it's clear where your heart lies, so just do what you gotta do. Come on, you knew I had to be back. You made a commitment to see this through to honor your own aunt's wishes, her final wishes. And I honored that commitment. The bakery's open, the contest is set, we found her recipes. You don't need me here. The, the three of you, you guys can finish this without me. But that's not really what this is about, is it? Then tell me, what is this really about? It's about you and me. You're taking this personal. I also have a commitment to my job that I've neglected. And I'm sorry you don't understand that. Well, good. You know what? Because there's that job again in New York. Amy. What happened? Good. Then do what you do best. Walk away. What Check inside. Call Jeanette, see if she's called her. Hey, babe. She's still there? Jack's checking, but I don't think so. I try to call, but I just keep getting her voicemail. I'll try again. Let me know if you hear anything. I don't know, he's still... 
Honey, he's coming out right now. I gotta go. Love you. Well, I blew it. So what do you think? I don't know, man. By the time he got to the house, she had cleared all her stuff out. Oh. Hey, buddy. Hey. So, anything? <sighs> Nothing. Nothing. Left a bunch of voicemails. She's gone. Look. Whatever you decide to do, we're behind you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's your call, man. The contest is on. You sure? We're gonna honor Linda by keeping her tradition going. Can't just throw it away because I blew things with Amy again. Yeah, come on, don't beat yourself up. People are expecting it, they're excited. I'm not gonna let everyone down. Hey, like I said before, we're in. Linda would've been so proud of you. Yeah, well, wish things would have turned out a little differently. Okay, so if we're gonna do this, we have like three days before the contest. We gotta light a fuse for Linda. For Linda. Once again, this is the voice of Chestnut, Earl Pratt Jr., reminding you that the Christmas cookie contest is just around the corner. So. Get those ovens preheated, those cookies baked, those recipes out of the mothballs, because this year is going to be a doozy. Won't you come home? Come home for Christmas this year. Thank you. There you go. Don't forget to register for the contest. Sure. I know it ain't easy. You got so much going on. Thank you. Me. Bradley. Hi. Uh, Hi. Don is requesting an update pronto. Okay. Well, the update is he's going to be very happy, and so is the client. Is that what you want me to tell yeah, him? I do. Don't forget, everybody, Santa Sparks are now on sale at Cocolitas. You only have one day left to get your cookie submitted for the annual Christmas cookie contest. Get those recipes together here on K Nut 100.5 The Nut. I did it! Yeah, this looks good. Definitely. I like it. Well done, team. Stone, fantastic. Glad you're happy. Won't you come home? Come home for Christmas this year. Won't you come home? Come home for Christmas this year. Won't you come home? Come home for Christmas this year. Can you please hold this while I cut the ribbon? Thank you. Don't you dare. <laughs> no, what are you doing? Flower! <gasps> oh, I forgot we had a table. We had everything. Stone. Party starts in five minutes. Don, um, I'm sorry. I've decided I'm not coming. What do you mean you've decided? No, I'm demanding that you get over here pronto. Look, I did what you needed me to do. I came back. I, I whipped up a new campaign for Kellers in record time. The client's happy. You're happy. But I realized that I'm not happy. You're in Hazelnut, aren't you? 
chestnut. I just landed. You know what this means. Yeah, I do. I do, Don. But you don't have to fire me because I quit. Goodbye. Wow. She really blew it. That's why you're still an assistant. What do you mean? Everyone who works at this agency should have that kind of passion. Bradley. It's all about passion. Yes, sir. Bad girl. Here you go, James. Hey, thanks for making it out today. Yeah, too early. The jelly presses better win this year. We do. Wouldn't be the holidays without your jelly presses. Thank you. Good luck. James is pushing his jelly presses again. Oh, babe, you need jelly presses. Hey. Hey, Jack. It's going. Cool. Cool. Where's Amy? Oh, you didn't hear. She has uh, another obligation in New York, so she's not going to be able to make it. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess we'll just have to make Linda proud without her. We will. Okay. I'm going to check on the road. We might as well get this show on the road, huh? Can you tell Junior to get it yeah. in here? <laughs> Your silver snowflakes should not have salt. Your silver snowflakes should not have salt. I'm actually allergic to coconut. Earl? I'm actually not allergic to coconut, but food allergies had drama. Ready now? Uh, yes. Pipes are ready. The golden voice is ready to lay its golden egg. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? My name is Jack Evans. I am the new co-owner of Cocolita Cakes. My business partner, Amy Stone, couldn't be with us tonight. On behalf of her and my incredible business partners, Luke and Jeanette Crowder, and Frank O'Brien, for letting us use his diner once again. Yes, Frank! It is my great honor to welcome you to the 50th annual Christmas Cookie Contest. Yeah! Woo! Now, as most of you know, Linda Sullivan, the founder of the bakery and this great tradition is no longer with us. So we would like to dedicate tonight to Linda as a celebration of her inspirational life. And now, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you your host and cookie judge for this evening, the voice of Chestnut Radio, Mr. Earl Pratt. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, as many of you know, my father, Earl Sr., hosted this event for many, many years. And I am so happy and honored to be here tonight on this very special occasion, the 50th anniversary of the Christmas Cookie Contest. Yes, yes. <laughs> Linda, we miss you, but we are gonna do you proud tonight. So. Who is my very first extra brave, extra brave soul who wants to come on up here and be judged? Don't be shy, come on. Come on up here. He's yours. Yes, what's your name? Shari. Shari, it's nice to meet you. Now, I know you made these cookies, but I'm pretty sure you made that sweater too, am I right? Yes. How do I know that? Because the cookies match the sweater. Look at that. The cookies match the sweater. I'm not lying. This lady is coordinated. <laughs> Moment of truth, Shari. Here we go. Now, before I do this, though, I want to remind each and every one of you that I will be judging each cookie tonight by the very scientific DAT method. And if you think DAT sounds like I made it up, you're right. I did. I made it up. <laughs> but what does it stand for? Well, the D stands for design. The A, aroma. And last but not least, the T for taste. That's good. It's very good, Shari. Thank you so much. All right, who's next? Let's get this party started, all right? Am I getting ginger? It's good news, Earl. I was always more of a Marianne man myself. <laughs> I smell pine. 
You smell the pine? It smells like pine. Red velvet, interesting. Red for Christmas, right? I have to commend you, you do understand decorating. I've only been practicing for 30 years. <laughs> Roma? It smells like Christmas. Fruit filling, bold choice. That is good, okay, thank you so much. I feel like I'm kitchen cleaner. I'm sorry. Come oh. on. It's very cloying on the tongue. It's got milk or a cocoa or something. Mmm, kind of. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, really good. Thank you, Lightfoot. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Do you have a favorite yet? No. I think I do. Good. Now, have I missed any entries? Good, because I am stuffed like a Christmas turkey. <laughs> now, after very careful and highly subjective deliberation, I have settled on a winner for the 50th annual Christmas cookie contest. May I have the grand prize ribbon, please? I thought you had it. No, I thought you did. I um, don't have it. No, I don't. I've got it. Amy? Sorry, I know I forgot something. You flew all the way back from New York to deliver a ribbon? All right, Earl, let's do this. Okay, everybody, fasten your seatbelts. The winner of the 50th annual Christmas cookie contest is... Uh, Luke, can I get a drum roll, please? Oh. Frank O'Brien and his unbeatable melted snowman. And you know what this means? What? You get your recipe in Linda's tin. Yes! And it's about time, too, huh? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Santa. Thank you, Chestnut. I have a surprise for you. The big oh, Santa Sparks? No, they're better. They're mine. And I promise I didn't use any salt. Hmm. Not bad. That's it? Not bad? They're perfect. I thought tonight went really, really well. Yeah, it was perfect for the yeah. 50th, don't you think? Yes, and Great. thank you guys so much for the hard work. Here it is. Mm. The award-winning Melting Snowman recipe. I feel honored, thank you. Thank you. It's in the tin. Yes, it is. Finally in the tin, Frank. Mm. What's that? What is know. that? That's Aunt Linda's handwriting. Huh. I'll know that for you. Open it, what's it say? I don't know. Oh, wow. Dear Amy and Jack, if you found this, it means you've decided to take me up on my request to reopen the bakery and hold the contest again. You might have wondered why I chose you two for this assignment, and with any luck, you've already figured it out. You two always had a special place in my heart, but most importantly, you had a special place in each other's. I don't want to sell my bakery to some big corporate entity. I started it as a place for the families of Chestnut to come and enjoy themselves. I want you to continue the tradition. And maybe one day, you'll have a family of your own. Until then, this bakery and all of the joy it brings is my Christmas gift to you both. Merry Christmas with all my love. Aunt Linda, it's too bad you missed a contest. There's always next year. Next year? What do you mean by that? Well, we can't let tradition fade away, right? We have a responsibility to the town and to Aunt Linda. Are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? Yep. I'm moving back. I'm going to live in Aunt Linda's house and run the bakery year round. Do you want to be my head baker? I do. Accountant? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I can do promotions. Yes, you can, Earl. <laughs> now, wait a minute. 
I am your partner. And uh, I was not consulted in the making of this decision. Silent partner. Oh, yes. Well, after all that we've been through, you're going to play hard to get with me now. Shush. Merry Christmas, Jack. Merry Christmas, Amy.